Because I'd actually worried about him because I do know him very well. We're part of the same generation. And I just know how it is to be on the back foot, have people talk negatively about you, have, you people, have people write you off, and, and also feel that sway within the team that the other guy is getting all the energy. Mm. And I know the psychological turmoil that you go through as a driver and as an athlete. And, and I know Seb has been going through that. And it's not it's, and, you know, and his teammates just been on the up and the up and the up. Yeah. Everyone, you know, I've spoken to people who are super, super high up people. I said, oh, for me, Seb's written off, that's him done. Of course, you know, now they're obviously, it looks, appears like they've put all their eggs in one basket. So where Seb was the number one driver that they would always choose is where now it looks like, it looked, appears to have been for some time. It that does. is now all Charles and they're banking their future on, mm. on Charles. And I think you'll see things evolve over the next year or so that will show you that that's the case but then never under i would say never underestimate the the impact of the driver that car has developed over these years has been nothing to do with charles hmm. it's been all seb's work with the team sebastian vettel and ferrari have reached the end of their partnership it all started back in 2015 when he took over from a departing Fernando Alonso to McLaren. It only took two races for him to take his first win in red at the Malaysian Grand Prix. The season would go on to bring two more race wins in Hungary and in Singapore, as well as 13 podiums and one pole position, leading to third place in the championship. This season was followed by a frustrating one the year after, as he and Ferrari failed to carry that momentum over from 2015. They finished the year winless and podiums became less frequent as Red Bull made a step up with Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. Things would take a turn for the better ahead of the 2017 aero regulation changes as Sebastian and Ferrari managed to develop a car capable of challenging the all-powerful Mercedes-Benz. Despite a few mistakes that ultimately lost them the championship, it was a huge leap forward for both Seb and the team in their most successful year in the hybrid era. Like 2015, Seb finished the season with 13 podiums, the joint most podiums on the grid alongside the Mercedes boys. But unlike 2015, he won five races, stormed to four pole positions, and finished second in the championship in an intense battle with Hamilton, albeit for 65% of the season. When 2018 rolled around, Seb came back stronger than ever, winning four of the first 10 races with Hamilton trailing in the championship by just eight points. But then, Germany happened. And then Monza, and then Japan, and then Austin. And all of a sudden, he found himself out of contention after being the favourites. A combination of mistakes and Ferrari's poor development led to Seb finishing 88 points behind Hamilton. 2019 brought a new challenge in the form of an up-and-coming prospect in Charles Leclerc. A slow start meant that Mercedes gained an early advantage over the team that had challenged them the most in the two seasons prior. However, a controversial engine upgrade after the summer break brought them right back into contention. But it was the Monogasque who shined brighter as his German teammate looked like he was fizzling out. Nevertheless, Seb still took a race win in Singapore in what would go on to be his last win for the Scuderia. Enter 2020. Before the season had even started, he was betrayed by Mattia Bonotto, who he came to an agreement with at the end of 2019 for a contract extension. Going into the first race of the season, he already had the burden of figuring out where he would be in 2021. Things didn't get any easier as the year progressed, as the breakup only got uglier and uglier. It even got to a point where Sebastian himself questioned whether he had the same equipment as Charles Leclerc. In an interview with RTL, he stated, It's obvious the car is faster. It looks much easier to drive. I've been biting my tongue all year. Some idiots may never figure it out, but am I a complete idiot? I doubt it. I have to think we have the same car, and I think I trust the people around me and in the garage. Whether or not Ferrari deliberately sabotaged Sebastian's season is up for debate. In my opinion, it wouldn't have made any sense given that they were fighting for third place in the Constructors' Championship. So then we have to ask ourselves, did Seb just throw in the towel and see out this nightmare of a season until the end? Well, again, 
the situation was more complex than that. I want to offer a perspective into all of this that I don't think has been covered to a great enough depth yet. A lot of fans of Formula 1 and sports in general underestimate the mental aspect of competition. Now, don't get me wrong, I am by no means a sports psychologist. But what you guys might not know about me is that I used to be a national level swimmer. So I have some knowledge on how the mind can be used to leverage an athlete's performance. Hopefully, I can use this to explain the breakup between Ferrari and Sebastian from the Italian Grand Prix in 2018 to now. For those of you who watched Formula 1 when Seb was the dominant force with Red Bull, do you remember how he used to close his eyes before every qualifying session? If the answer is yes, then do you know the reason behind this practice? If your answer was along the lines of visualization, then you are spot on. In essence, it is the process of creating a mental image of what you want to happen in reality. Athletes such as Michael Phelps, Serena Williams, Conor McGregor and many others all use it to manifest how they want to perform in a race, before a point, or in Connor's case, a fight. It can be as detailed as they wish, even to the last millisecond of lap time. In Formula 1, what separates the best isn't the ability to nail a single lap, but to do it time after time, race after race, and season after season. Sebastian's four championship winning seasons at Red Bull are a prime example of this exact quality. In his words, qualifying is very raw, so you spend time going through the lap. What are the key points? Where do you have to improve compared to the run before? Once you start the lap, there is no time to think, so you clear your mind and you have to be in the moment. Even if you make a mistake, it's important not to think about it. You just focus corner by corner, ideally, let it flow. The more I follow and research about sports in general, the more I appreciate qualities such as these that truly make Sebastian Vettel an all-time great. So those who say he's lost his mojo, or he's not as good as he once was, I beg to differ. While yes, he can and will benefit from a mind reset after an emotional rollercoaster with Ferrari, his secrets to success are no longer a secret. On the other side of the garage was another mind master, Charles Leclerc, the 23-year-old Modigasque who we know hasn't had the easiest of childhoods, lost his godfather, lost his actual father, and lost one of his closest friends. Since the age of 11, Leclerc has worked with a mental coach named Riccardo Cesarelli to help him understand the racing mentality, an art that he has been honing to great effect even to this day. In a sense, Vettel had met his match, as Leclerc has described using very similar techniques to the German. There are many techniques that can be used. I personally like the one of picturing the perfect lap in my head, especially before qualifying. With Vettel already psychologically at a disadvantage going into 2019 against one of the best young talents on the grid, it was all but inevitable that he would struggle during the season and Ferrari would back their academy driver. The relationship between a driver and their machinery is absolutely paramount to success. How many times have you heard drivers saying, the car was amazing today, or the car just didn't feel right today? Though it may seem irrelevant to us as viewers, it's important to understand that these guys work incredibly hard to develop a near unbreakable bond between themselves and their cars. Seb and his car Lucilla by all means have not had the smoothest of relationships this year. We all know that Seb prefers a car with a stable rear end, but as Ferrari were lacking in engine power all season long, they had to make up for this by reducing drag on an already faulty chassis. Leclerc is more of a hustler and handling a car with a lively rear isn't that much of a problem for him. If I'm being brutally honest, Seb isn't the most adaptable driver compared to some of the other drivers on the grid, but he is a perfectionist. Once he has a car that he is confident in, and when he regains that all-important self-belief in his abilities, he will go back to being that clinical, consistent, and creative driver that we all know the true Sebastian Vettel to be. Aston Martin will provide that environment, and it's up to him to live up to the expectations of a four-time world champion. The Vettel Ferrari chapter has finally come to a close. What he has achieved with the Scuderia will forever be ingrained in the history books. It wasn't the fairy tale ending he was hoping for, but there is new hope coming in 2021 with a team that has proved they are capable of winning races. 
So just to end this video on a high note, Sebastian Vettel is the third most successful Ferrari driver of all time, with 14 wins, 55 podiums and 12 pole positions in 118 races. Some of the most memorable moments for me personally were Malaysia in 2015, his first win for the Scuderia. There's also Bahrain in 2018, the race where he displayed supreme tyre management skills by taking his soft tyres from lap 18 until the end in his 200th career start. At the end of this season, when Hamilton won his 7th World Championship, it was only fitting that Seb joined him on the podium in an extraordinary drive from P11. But the best one of all, in my opinion, was Germany 2019. In wet weather conditions, Seb came back from last on the grid to finish second place. You don't just forget how to drive all of a sudden. And I still think there is something left for this man to give. Those are my thoughts on Vettel's 2020 season and his relationship with Ferrari. What do you think contributed to everything that occurred during the season and in the seasons prior? Will Vettel bounce back with Aston Martin next year? Be sure to leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you're new to enjoy my latest videos in the future. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.